Holbrook New Media. This is Jeffrey K. Holbrook. Welcome to the audio feed from HolbrookNewMedia.com. Today, Jeff and Jeffrey, the weekly catch up. We hope you enjoy the audio version. If you want to see what we look like, I will embed the video for this episode at HolbrookNewMedia.com. Hello, everyone. I'm Jeff Blanchard. Next to me is my co host, Jeffrey K. Holbrook, and this is the weekly catch up. And we're back. Good evening or good morning, Mr. Holbrook. Good morning, sir. How are you today? I'm uh, I'm good. doing the tea thing again like I was doing last week. <laughs> oh, yes. I should really get into that and have a start uh, being a little bit cultured and having cups of tea, seeing as that's uh, what I was brought up on in England. But I don't think I've had a cup of tea for many a year, but it's, it can be quite refreshing. Yeah, actually, actually, uh, I remember hearing that uh, uh, a cup of tea is like an instant vacation you know because you stop i mean it actually is supposed to be good for your blood pressure the act of drinking tea not necessarily like it's just you know this magical potion but the stopping mm -hmm. you know smelling it uh drinking it and all it's just supposed to be like uh like you say it, it lowers your blood pressure and just kind of like an instant vacation they say well i must admit i do love tea and uh, mm -hmm. but I'm not having it for years I related it a bit to like smoking when <laughs> if you don't have one for ages, it's, it's a bit of a shock to the system. Huh. And I, for some reason, want this one day I'd made, there was a, 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 yeah, somebody made me a coffee and I just grabbed it and got a big sip of it. And that made me violently ill because it wasn't tea. It was coffee. Oh, <laughs> no, it wasn't coffee. I was saying it was tea. Oh, okay. okay. Just, it was just the shock. I think of me, the brain just anticipated the coffee and it just wasn't the right texture and it had nothing to do with the tea but it's just strange how mm -hmm. the mind works when you just got that set into there and it's just like when you've got a cup of tea or a cup of coffee and it's so nice and then you just do that and there's nothing left in it oh. and you just feel so disappointed and let down don't you and yes i mean i like i like tea hot I mean, I like hot yeah. tea. I don't like iced tea. Now, most Americans like iced tea. I just think there's something wrong with that. And even even if I'm drinking my tea in a cup and then I ignore it for a while and then I pick it up it and it gets cold, it doesn't taste the same. There's something wrong. <laughs> now, well, I must admit the same thing with coffee. But the strange thing is that with coffee... If it's lukewarm, I can't drink it. But sometimes if it's stone cold, I'll drink it. The rest mm -hmm. of it is yeah. strange how little things like, the, like that happen anyway. So mm -hmm. what have you been up to? Anything exciting? Because I surely haven't this week. <laughs> well, uh, people at work have been talking about, uh, you know, the what the fire stick is? The fire no, stick. What? I think it's is it put up by Amazon. It's kind of like a Roku where, you know, oh, it's a streaming just, uh, yeah. thing. Yes, yeah. And uh, people are talking about hacking this Fire Stick. Oh, I mean, to where now you can watch they're hacking it, and I mean, I don't know if they're they're doing it themselves, but but I've just heard of people talking about obtaining these hacked Fire Sticks, and it only costs them about sixty sixty five dollars or something like that, and then they don't have to have subscriptions to anything. Like for instance, oh. you know, we have a subscription to Netflix, Amazon Prime stuff like that that we stream with and this is um this is something to where you can watch anything any i mean any movies anything like that because they've hacked it somehow with software and and everybody are talking about that i mean for one thing obviously it's illegal and they're eventually going mm -hmm. to catch up with people doing this but at the same time you know would you want to get used to having everything and then suddenly you don't have it anymore whenever they clamp down on it you know even if you don't get thrown in jail or something I mean, I can understand taking the risk if you can, if, you know, you live in a country that doesn't, that's very hard to get any content. But like when mm -hmm. now, even us, we have Netflix. So just for even else, it's 12 bucks a month. Sure. Yeah. It doesn't have everything, but it's got enough. There's more than enough to keep you occupied. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's never. Yeah. Too, 
As I, I mean, said, that's no, just one of the yeah. situations. It's not much money to, and to keep honest, and let's face it, if we want c- good content, mm-hmm. how are we going to get it if nobody pays for these things? Eventually, that's why you do get a lot of rubbish on these sort of things as well, because well, the the budgets get less and less if they're not making money. So, mm-hmm. well, I'm, I'm not one for that. So. Well, uh, the, there was a person talking to me. He said, "Well, it's no different than back in the day, whenever the the huge." satellite dish antennas were first out and people would get mm. some type of thing and they would uh, decode the signals and rob the signals. But these were out of the air. You know, these signals were just in the air and they would get something to decode it. Well, this is something that is streaming right over the internet. And that's very trackable, you know, where mm. it's going. So it's not like you're pulling something that's just loose in the air and you happen to be decoding it and picking it up. This is something that is... You know, they know where you are. Mm. I mean, you know, any anytime, anytime you go somewhere and an ad will pop up, sometimes it'll say that I live in uh, Poco, West Virginia, which is about 15 miles from here, maybe about, you know, 10, 12, 15 miles from here. And that's evidently where our Internet node is at. You know, and also the political ad for the local area will pop up. And uh, they know where you're at. I mean, it's very simple for them to know where you're at. But we had we here you have sort of like the Apple TV, but we don't have the Roku, so uh, uh, and don't have the what's it the what is it called the Fire Stick? Is yeah, the, the Fire Amazon Stick. Stick. I think it's Amazon Fire Stick. Yeah, I think yeah. that's what it is. Yeah, we don't have that, but we have some. There's some other little boxes you get something from China oh, okay. that do come out there that they do have a lot of. They have all, all these different things and i thought well how does it do it is but you can also see it seems to feed on a bit like what was it the the music one where it used to stream off all uh, lots of different people's uh, copies Nap- napster the, napster i think it's a similar sort of thing to that but it's okay. like everything they'll get to the bottom of that and and stop it but mm-hmm. even uh, having said that since piracy is being at being out and people just watching all this, the movie industry really hasn't done it. There's done really well out of it, I think, because before that, we never used to have picture theaters, did we? Before piracy, <laughs> before people would watch, people would very really like here. We had when I was in Dandenong, we had one picture theater, and mm. then that died, that closed down. One drive in moved that closed down because nobody was going to it. But now, even in uh, just round the corner, you know, a few shopping centres where there's probably 30, 40 cinemas mm-hmm. within within an hour's drive round in the city here. Yes. Whereas it's never been so good. And then you go into the shops and there's DVDs. People are buying them hand over fist and say, well, if they can get it all over the internet. But I'm the same. If I see something like, put it like the Game of Thrones, nearly everybody's seems to watch the illegal copies of them downloaded first before uh, you get the the... The, if they don't subscribe to HBO, but even then, when if I see them, like I just went out and bought all the uh, Game of Thrones this week because they okay. had them on special, and there's nothing like having the proper DVD, the Blu-ray mm-hmm. with the best sound and the great picture. Rather but than I somebody mean, just hold, holding a little camera in a oh, theater trying to watch that because they said I just don't want the horrible quality. But I must admit, sometimes I can do look at those things to see uh, what things are like because there's a lot of things. I've bought you know, over the last few years on DVDs from the stores that I would have never have ever thought of uh, buying in a, in a pink fit if I had, hadn't done that. But I don't have to do it as much these days with uh, Netflix because we've only had Netflix here for about well, nearly two years, I think it is now. But oh, okay. before then, we didn't have anything. We had uh, the, we very uh, early in the cable TV thing. We never had cable TV 10 after before 10 years ago, I think, but mm-hmm. you've had it since. Oh, the yeah, yeah. We, I mean, yeah, <laughs> even out in rural areas where we still a lot further out than we do now, in rural areas, um, we got, uh, you know, 20 channels or 25 channels uh, 25 years ago or so. And this was way mm-hmm. out in what we call the boonies, way out in the country. So, you know, it was, it was that way. One of the things I found that you would assume that the cheaper that, the accessibility of all these movies and all these things are like you say you're paying twelve dollars for Netflix, you know. For mm. us, it's closer to eight, you know, or something like that. So it's probably comparable. Um, it as cheap as it is, 
other than the thrill of breaking the law, I mean, it's so cheap to get. What's the problem? Why not just go ahead and pay for it and get it? I mean, maybe they just feel like there's a thrill of some kind. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, as I said, I always feel if there's anything that I like to watch, I'll always end up getting the, the, real the DVDs. And, and I'm just looking before, I'll be, uh, with, there's a lovely iPhone app that catalogs your DVDs. And mm -hmm. with the camera in the phone, you just scan the barcode and it goes to the internet, gets yeah. a lovely picture, all the details on it. And you can actually keep track of what you're watching as well. I've watched that episode and keep track of that on the, the DVD. Oh. But I went on to there and I thought, I'm not, and I'm not a huge collect, but I've got over a thousand DVDs. Oh, wow. <laughs> and well, I was just thinking, that how, I've got to, I'm, I might have to employ a cabinet maker to build me something because it's just got out of this. Just piles of them now. You have a, a shelf to put them in, but they, that only fits probably about 200. I had a special, somebody made me a special, you know, upright thing, but that fits about 80 or something. In there. There's mm -hmm. nowhere near enough. Well, the uh, uh, Cinema Toast Crunch podcast guys, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I've been on their show, I think, three times. And uh, the podcasting room that they have. Mm hmm. I had a hard time getting any sound treatment. You know, I was trying to help them with their audio and stuff. Had a hard time getting any sound treatment in the room simply because it is wall to wall DVDs, Blu rays, and everything. This whole room, the walls are covered with these yeah. shelves, this custom shelving that they've made that is just covered with that. And that's just one of the rooms because across the hallways on the second floor, across the hallway is the other room that has <laughs> stuff. And then he has another room for, uh, um comic books and stuff that he collects and so i mean it's just like almost the entire upstairs all these different rooms are just filled with that i i don't think he's got everything inventoried yet i mean he did years you know some time ago but he's always obtaining new stuff and i cannot imagine you know how many he really has because i mean it's just everywhere and that's what he said if somebody like me who's not a huge collector has has got a thousand and i'll tell you what started off my collection was uh well, now i've been at my present job 16 years so uh 16 17 18 about 18 years ago when when i was at, i was at worked for sony oh in the they did the, when they owned columbia pictures and did all all the sony moves so that they had all the dvds mm -hmm. and part of having staff price i could get all their CDs for $6.95. Oh, nice. Well, 18 years ago, mm -hmm. that, was, that was huge because, I mean, you were paying $40-odd for a DVD, any old rubbish thing you got. So when uh, I got made redundant because I was moving the office to Sydney, they said, well, you buy it. So I bought the whole collection. <laughs> you oh. know, I put everything I, everything I wanted. You know, I went yeah. through the whole collection and bought everything. And I thought, well... I can't go wrong with that. The DVD and the, hmm. the still all good. I thought for six dollars ninety five back then, and even now, a lot of them they come up for six ninety five, don't they? When they're, they're mm -hmm. trying to clear them out. So I thought mm -hmm. I can't can't go wrong. And one of my favourites ones was, uh, and I always remember this. It's one of the first ones I got from Sony. Was Crazy in Alabama. Do you hmm. remember I've, that I've heard the title. I don't think I've seen it. You've got to see that. It's it's quite a good one. It's really, really good film. I've watched that a few times, but it's a, a, a real good film. I quite enjoy that. But see, that's where I started from. And with these cabinets, I want to have something that's not just a shelf because I'd have to have, like you said, kit out the whole place with the one. But I, what I want to have is a cabinet that's sort of quite deep and have sliding shelf, you know, that rotate, like have a rolling. Oh, wow. Shelf. Yeah. That's what I want. So you can roll them to say so you have more like three levels deep. And oh, that's then fancy, roll them yeah. Like, because you can afford the, the thickness of the space, but you just don't want to cover the whole walls. But then what do you build? Do you build one that takes your 1,000 DVDs? Or do you build one that will take two thousand DVDs? Uh, no, because uh, once once you have everything stored, uh, the books are the same way. Like I like to collect older books, and um, you know, especially eyewitness accounts, the history and stuff like that. And so, you know, you can never not find more books. Yeah. No, well, and that's the thing is, you, you're going to always have uh, 
extra ones there. And I'm getting to the stage now. Well, thank goodness for this app where I can have a look what my collection is because I can go into a store and quickly look up what I do have because you start getting mm-hmm. that many that you wonder what on earth have I, I got. But the thing is, I'm hopefully start, don't buy as many these days because with Netflix, there's a lot of those things that you say, oh, that's cheap. But you say, oh, well, it's on Netflix. I'll watch it once. It might be good. I've just finished watching uh, another one on there was uh, The New Kingdom, I think it was, which mm. is – it's pretty much looks like it's like a, it's like Game of Thrones, but it's true. It's going oh. covering English history, oh, but God. it's it's like the same sort of style of thing, but it's not all make believe. It's just about uh, you know Alfred the Great mm-hmm. in that time, the Danes are pl- you know raping, plundering, and murdering everybody in sight, and uh, but this so quite similar to Game of Thrones, really, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Like you say, the real uh, you know these these. Uh fictional things imitate real life <laughs> well that's that's the thing that really just amazed me why i liked it so much was you're just watching that but yeah the, the games were great for entertainment but when you're watching this you think hang on they're depicting actual history that mm-hmm. happened i know they may you know it's not going they're going to make up all the things in between them but the the actual story is probably true what happened but the way they get there, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm a little sure artistic all. license there, yeah. yeah. There's no way no, but people's going to be going, oh, no, and this happened there because the, the, the writings wouldn't have been that good that uh, would still have some this far down the track anyway. Mm-hmm. But uh, I've been getting hooked onto that and just finished watching The Tudors, which is a, a four-season show, a BBC one, I think it is, for... Is it BBC? I'm not too sure. Yes, I've seen it. It's it's available here, but I haven't watched it or anything yet. Oh, it's good. I've I bought that and uh, been watching that. So it follows the life of Henry VIII mm-hmm. and uh, and all his wives and kids on that. And I've just finished that and uh, found on the in the shop just cheaply Kate Blanchett who mm-hmm. does uh, Elizabeth the first. Yes. And there's two wives of her, so it's following on from that. So oh, okay. I've got that. Also, what's that with my mother when I go and visit her? So it's all good things that she likes, and that's well, why sure. I buy the DVDs because I can't stream it down there because mm-hmm. I can't sell on Netflix. They've got an internet, but it's uh, it's about as fast as a snail. Their internet, <laughs> so it's just fortunate if you get a if you just get a, an email because that, it's a shared thing. You don't expect it's a free internet service, so you can't expect too much. It does most little things, but you can get it at the odd YouTube if you want to plug it into the TV and do that, but it's not good enough to uh, to stream Netflix anyway. But, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, that's what I've been sort of doing a lot this week of watching a bit more uh, of these series. But even then, I've been getting stuck into the music a bit more as well and doing practicing and practicing. So one day I might even be able to play it properly. Well, no, I, I imagine you're... Uh... You're you're kind of self-deprecating. I would say you you're probably a lot better than what you're letting on right now. Well, I like I like, but the thing is, I love the technology and just the things you can do. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, yes, I can play bits and pieces here, but I'd love to be able to use all the technology that's with it to make it sound fantastic. Because what I like with all these electronics, you can make yourself sound like a band with just one person, mm-hmm. but you've still been able to learn how to use all the little bits and pieces on there but hey i'll get there eventually so i've heard somewhere they were saying i was watching a, a little uh training course on doing presentations hmm. and there was quoting somebody and said somebody says to master a task you have to do it for ten thousand hours and so i figured out if i if i do an hour's worth of practice on the keyboard every night it'll be 38 years before i before i perfect it <laughs> so I'm, I'm all not, right by the time i perfected it my fingers will have seized up <laughs> <laughs> all that but gee, that sounds a lot but hey maybe you have to practice uh, uh eight hours a day because there's all these different training things to get you better at the keyboard or the piano Mm -hmm. but like somebody was saying you said yeah the certain exercise yes they're great exercises but they're designed for people who are devoting eight hours a day to to studying it but not just going to practice an hour a day if you're lucky they're practicing eight hours a day and as i said that's where these top pianists get it from they're not just doing it for five minutes or an hour a day that's just their lives 
And plus, like we've, I think we've talked before, sometimes people, they're just gifted no matter how much some other people do it. They might get good at it, but these other people don't have to, they do do a little bit of practice, but they're just gifted. They've just got it, haven't they? So. Yeah, like you say, I, I think I think um, being gifted, and then if you practice too, that's when they're mm, clearly phenomenal. A, you know, yeah, I mean, yeah, um, they're they're good and they understand the theory. They pick it up really easily, but to actually uh, be gifted and put the time in—that's that's serious. You know, that's 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 the virtuosos that you run into. And the the thing is, is all these people that do these concerts and make it look effortless they're not effortless they they do practice 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 and practice but they just make it look like all they're doing is just doing it so effortlessly and i know just from myself if you you can't just go go out there and just wing it you've got to do tons and tons of practice and play the thing hundreds of times and just get get it down pat but it's uh you know quite strange how some people just think well you just Oh, I've been trying that and trying that. It's like when you learn. I don't know if you've ever gone deep into Excel or Word or PowerPoint. Um, like, it... like you say, Word, but as far as like the, uh, you know, Excel and all the little things you can do to, I mean, it's it's magic. But I've never had a job that actually required me to do um, a lot with those. Um, but then, yeah, I mean, but I understand you can just like rule the world from Excel. But the thing is, you can do that, and anybody can learn it, and mm -hmm. it's so easy to learn. Mm -hmm. But if you don't put it into practice, after you've used it, it's about two weeks later, it's gone. Because this, this, it's not hard to do, but it's complicated if you don't use it, whereas that's mm -hmm. why people who are accountants and things like that that need it in an everyday can do wonders with these things, and people in business who are doing presentations and doing training can do a lot more with the PowerPoint. I was watching uh, uh, one lady showing a PowerPoint, and she does so much with PowerPoint. You would think she was using Photoshop, mm -hmm. but she's got to the stage where she can she cuts out images. She's got all these uh, backgrounds that fall away from things, and it's got nothing to do with Photoshop. It's all just the the the, the power of PowerPoint. But she's got a use for it, and she keeps it up. And I've gone through a lot of their these sort of training things. And as I said, if you don't need it, don't waste your time learning it. But that's where the internet comes in. You do your Excel, and what do you do if you're trying to figure out how to do a formula on a cell? First thing you do is go to the old YouTube and say, how do you do a formula on a cell? And then you'll see somebody's done a two-minute video, and it's usually a six-year-old telling you how to do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've just got my Excel here. <laughs> just do And you just feel so silly, but they're so smart. And most of the time when you do get these young kids showing you, they've got it right, and they do it really good. And you think, how did they just pick that up so much? How did they get that? But I suppose they want to learn how to edit their games, how they want to do these things. It's got something to do with what they want to do anyway. So uh, I, get, I, I really enjoy the like microphone reviews by the kids, mm -hmm. you know, because, uh, you know, you look on there and you want to see a review on a particular microphone you might be interested in using for podcasting or something. And, um, mm -hmm. and then there'll be some little kid on there explaining how to use it and what's going on like that. And it's kind of like, Oh, okay. You know, and, most, and again, they're going, they're going to be using it for their gaming, um, you know, and so they may have a different environment than what, than what a podcaster might have. And so, you know, they'll, they'll tell you how to use, for instance, the Blue Yeti uh, condenser microphone, just set it in the middle of the table and, and then you're just gaming and doing everything. And we you know you may want a little better sound than that. If you're going to be uh, podcasting and things, you know, getting a little, a little better audio than that, uh, rather than, than what you would just by setting a condenser in the middle of the table and every move you make, every sound you do the squeaking chair and the somebody across the room, your cat meowing and, you know, <laughs> different th things like that. Cause the condenser will pick all that up, but it depends on if, you, if you're doing audio or not. And I said the dog snoring. I don't know if you can yeah. pick that up, but he's snoring tonight. So <laughs> yeah, well, I haven't, I haven't heard it yet. <laughs> you know, like you say is, like you say, he, he deserves to have a bit of a snooze every now and then. Um, I mean, they said, 
And these kids, when they are showing you, the, they said, I don't know what, to, you just go here and do that. I don't know what the button's called. I don't know what the thing is, but you just do that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what it is, but they just thought, well, that's how you do it. It's just experience. Uh, one of the things I've been doing, and, and I do this a lot, one of my favorite podcasts of all time is called Working Class Audio. Uh, a guy oh, named yeah. Matt uh, Boudreau is the guy's name. And he's actually a recording studio engineer. And he is a very good interviewer and he interviews all of these people who are engineers and different recording studios and famous people, even musicians from some of these bands that you've heard of, uh, engineers who mixed these big name bands. Uh, there was one guy on there that, that had been, that worked with Prince for a long time, you know? And, and so he had a guy on there today that actually does sound for video games. Oh, okay. and so and so you know most most of the other episodes have been about you know engineers and music mm -hmm. and you know some voiceover stuff and things like that and so I really enjoyed it. it's really a great a great setup um, and I, I just whenever I run out of the normal podcast I listen to I'm just listening to that straight through I've got a bunch of older episodes and stuff well this time this guy was talking about how how they do sound in video games I'm talking about the high end video games and it's something I'd never thought of but they don't just record, for instance, a gun sound in one of these war war games. Mm -hmm. they, you can't just do that because there's the sound of the gun being fired. There's the sound of a bolt sliding back. There's the sound of the shell being ejected and then striking yep. the ground, yep. the grass, a wall. You know, and then how far was the gun fired on the other side of a wall? Yeah, and and, and, and so, so he's explaining how this is done, and and I found it kind of fascinating because you're talking about a uh, okay. There's like a mixer inside of the game is the way it's set up, and they have these sounds that are sampled, such as the actual gunshot. Well, and then they have references that tell it okay because you are this many feet away from where the gun was actually fired, you bring the faders down this much. So it's not as loud. You're on the other side of a wall. And so you use a, you know, a low pass filter to take the rumble out of it or you do. And so they're basically having these sounds of which there might be 10 different sounds that involve firing a gun, you know, but then they run it through these mixers and different things uh, based on the distance. There's calculations made on the distance on the, you know, uh, is it, are you behind the person? Was it fired right beside of your head? You know, and, and, and like you say, just even to where the shells are hitting, what type of material are they hitting concrete? Are they landing in grass? You know, whatever's happening. And so they, they have the sounds, but then they run them through these filters based on the calculations that they made. And so that determines how loud it is, how, you know, how boomy it is or how, you know, whatever. And I mean, yeah, I found it fascinating because, does that sound really good? I'll, I'll That's have extremely that complicated. What, yeah. What's your, was his name again? Uh, Working Class Audio is the name of the uh, the uh, Put that in podcast. Notes. Class Audio. Working Class Audio. Matt Boudreau yeah. is the uh, the uh, guy, the podcasting oh, guy, to, and he so in, interviews all these people. It's great stuff. Like you said, when they've got uh, things like um, the shell casing coming out, I suppose it would even be where's the person looking at it from mm -hmm. and it's going to that side because we'll have stereo so they've got to have it is it that side or that's like you can't just have it everywhere no exactly that's what, exactly that's that's what he's talking about is it, it's exactly it like that. that you know and, and something may hit on the right side of you and bounce past you mm. and it pans you know <laughs> it's great it's great great stuff i mean it's way more complicated i think than uh uh recording an album or something like that which is complicated but this it's 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 not like you know with, with with a song you have your snare drum and your you know other drums and all these things are done and they sound basically the same throughout the entire song once you get it set up well this here is constantly shifting if you just turn your head you know the noise is is different and it sounds different things go by you you know and an animal runs by you know and runs right by you and you know, and again, it's, and, and it can be going by, but then you turn your head while it's going by and they calculate that. 
<laughs> and you know, and so you have all these sounds that are then being filtered based on your activities in the game. And I mean, it's really complicated, but it it's really fancy the way they do it. I, I was just totally impressed with this guy. It was it was it was really cool. I'll have to uh, have a look at that. But like we've always been saying that sound really does make a huge difference. Mm -hmm. I was just saying earlier about the, that show, the, the, the New Kingdom. And the England, the English have been doing these sort of films for years, but just ha having actors stand up and do the lines. Yes, it's still exactly the same thing that they're doing. But now with just putting them out and having people fight and having the proper sounds of people clashing and that it puts a whole new meaning to the thing and gets people involved in it whereas like the story that's probably filmed that hundreds of times doing the same thing with people in a field fighting in the english countryside and that but now they can have all the proper sounds with people in there it's, it's just and the cameras angles and all those different things it's just amazing what uh what that sound makes and, and like somebody said to me before they said have you ever done that with the uh, i think if you were uh, switch the sound off and watch some of these films they're ridiculous <laughs> <laughs> you know it's just because it just doesn't seem much at all and same thing with these games you switch the sound off and, and it's just nothing but the whole experience to uh, immerse you in there is the the sound quality and i think that's what drives us what did uh where did somebody else say uh i don't know where i heard this quote i remembered what did they say? He said, uh, that's why we're given two ears and one mouth because listen more and, sh and don't talk as much or mm -hmm. something like that. Somebody said, I don't know where it came from. So I thought that was so true that they said, well, we say we're given two ears and one mouth for a reason. We mm -hmm. should be listening and talking. <laughs> and I thought, no, that yeah, I, so I agree. I was, uh, was also um, one of my favorite quotes is it is better to remain silent and be thought a fool than to open your mouth wide and remove all doubt. <laughs> that sounds like a Chinese fortune cookie. Yeah, I mean, yeah it could, <laughs> could, could be. I think somebody attributed it to Abraham Lincoln or something, but, you know, who knows? <laughs> It'd be good to get all these things and see where they came from, but there's so many of these little little gems, and you think, you I always think about that. I thought, what happened to make them come out with that? Some, I would love to know what the comment that person said to make him say that mm -hmm. i thought that would be lovely to find out and he said no wonder he said that because he he could just see who would be who would be the fool on the end other end of that comment so um well i also learned a new word this week too oh. uh, my friend justin turner at work we were uh, we work in the same area now sometimes and so mm -hmm. he came across this word i didn't realize there was a word for it because you hear people who will start to say some old saying or some old expression and then they'll they'll mess it up like one guy was saying that hindsight was 50 50. Right. you know instead of 2020 like you know <laughs> hindsight like you know you can see what has already happened and it's 2020 vision then because you know what happened but what That's this wrong. guy said was hindsight was 50 50. <laughs> and so you know so it's but anyway that that is called a malifor a malifor. Malifor. Whenever you actually mess up, you know, like, um, oh. uh, or, or you take a couple of these old sayings and you add something to it, like, um, you can lead lead a lemon to water, but you can't make lemonade. I mean, oh. <laughs> like lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink, and then you mix it up with something else. I mean, you know, there's a, I mean, some people, this one guy said he was going to, if he was going to retire, he had to get his ducks in a pond. <laughs> <laughs> this is a guy at work. He's really big about this stuff. Yeah. And he just says these things. He's talking about getting his ducks in a row, you know, and that's a, that's an old saying that they have. Yeah, you heard that. But he said he was going to get his yeah. ducks in a pond. Ducks in a pond. <laughs> well, a friend of mine said, uh, was, uh, there's a saying, oh, he rubs me up the wrong way. I oh. said, no. He gets he he rubs you the wrong wrong way or gets up your nose. I said, but she combined them and said he gets up my nose the wrong way. I said, well, there's not a right way to get up your nose. But I said he he it's either they rub you up the wrong way or get up your nose. He, mm -hmm. But it's always fun when you it's a, but hey that sounds good. <laughs> it gets well, up my nose the wrong way. There were there there were uh, there's words sometimes that sound similar 
that then get used in the place of the actual word. Um, I know in particular, there was this couple that was looking at new houses and, um, one of them, there was this brick house that had the porch that was kind of recessed back into it, you know, under the main roof and it was just kind of recessed. And so the lady got the word recessed and inset mixed, mixed up and yeah. told the realtor that she really enjoyed, she really liked that incest porch. I was scared. You know. <laughs> and so it was like, <laughs> no, <laughs> you know, the realtor's like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's like you see on the news. You say, like, I'll remember the classic one that says, "President Reagan is in the third year, the year of his pregnancy." Yeah. <laughs> they, they do silly things like that. Yeah. You think, what are they thinking of at the time when they're, they're saying all these things? But yeah. I mean, it's it's so easy to do. And uh, I forget somebody was saying on the radio that was doing an advert. You know, without the do on the adverts, some live live adverts, and he just totally made a messed up one word which was uh, i forget what it was now but it was the total crux of the the, the point of the story and that and i thought mm -hmm. oh the advertisers won't be happy with that one <laughs> well <laughs> uh, well, uh, well i enjoy substituting words on purpose sometimes that sound similar mm -hmm. and just and, and see if anybody catches it like uh there's been a couple of times at work that a supervisor would come up and, you know, they gather everybody up and they're having some kind of service talk, you know, safety talk or something like that. And, uh, and then, you know, a few people make comments here and there and, and, uh, then I'll look at them and I said, you know, that was way better than I expectorated. <laughs> you know, which, you know, expected. Okay. That's one thing, but expectorate means to spit. <laughs> <laughs> and so they never catch it you know if you ever say something like that there's they, they never catch on to what you're saying you know and it's it's similar it's a similar sounding word but but it means something completely different and and they don't catch it i you know yeah but the only thing is you, you've got to watch that so you've got to be very careful with that because sometimes oh. they just don't say anything it's just that that Jeff, he's just such a fool. <laughs> no, yeah, well, the, you know, the, the the reputation I've kind of garnered is, is you know, people pay attention to what I'm saying because they know there's some kind of little trick in it somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, you just, you know they're, they're always kind of kind of leaning in to hear, hear what I'm getting ready to say, especially if, if there's a big crowd around and, and then I make an announcement like that of some kind. Then, you know, they're they're analyzing it to say, okay, what well, what did he really say? You know? And you know, one thing I really hate, and I, I never noticed it because it was only I just noticed it about 12 months ago, and I'd never noticed it before, but it's been around ages, was when people, instead of people saying my fault, oh, I'm sorry, that was my fault. Oh, uh -huh. see that, that, they said that was my bad. My bad. Yeah, I remember that. I can't stand that. And I thought, when did that come out? Well, I just, I thought, well it's been around for that? quite a while. It's been, yeah, it has, but I just, you know, how how did I been going around and just didn't experience that? And I said, what do you mean, my bad? Why haven't you heard that? And I thought, I well, no, say, I, would say it's my fault. I would say it was television, probably. Oh, my mm. bad. You know, I mean, it was, it was probably, um, it was something that just developed in a particular area, but then all of a sudden it ended up on a television show because of that probably out in California or something. A lot of things mm. are driven by California and New York, then they'll end up in television shows and then everybody is saying it you know it's it's, it's well, just something that ends up driving culture that way yeah we had a, a tv show here and it, the person in it was saying said something really wrong but it became part of culture and people still say it like that mm -hmm. and you think and like now oh, it really grates me when people say asterisk yeah instead of asterisk Mm -hmm. And now I sound like the idiot saying asterisk and I've got to say asterisk so they know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <Because> <laughs> you think, but it's become, I've become the, the full saying asterisk because <laughs> nearly everybody says asterisk. Don't they? <laughs> so it's really, really strange how, how they do that these days. But anyway, we can't, can't all, all be the same, but uh, it's just great listening to the way different people speak. Mm -hmm. And it's funny you should say that we've got a, a friend who's, uh, uh, well, she's, she's got a friend who's visiting from, uh, or from, over from uh, 
Nash, not not Nashville, from Tennessee. Mm-hmm. And he said, just excuse me, he said, but could you all speak a bit slower? So why? He said, I can't understand a word you're saying. <laughs> and it's just quite incredible how you don't realize how used to you, you get to people you talk to until somebody new comes in and you do realize this, like I'm supposed you do as well. When you talk, you speak very fast, mm-hmm. but the people you're around, you know exactly what they're saying. But if somebody comes in and also as well, coming from a different country, even though we both, me and you both speak English, mm-hmm. there's different cultural things, the way we speak English. And we say things quite differently. Or and the, what are they talking about? And you, by the, and it's like me if I'm listening to German. I know all the words they're saying, but I'm concentrating on this. What was that? Hang on. And you've missed the other thing, and it's the same thing with there. We say a lot of other things different ways than may than you may say it. Mm-hmm. And it, it's just quite incredible when you think, oh, you just don't realise that you just ramble on, and people just can't understand you, but. Uh, but as said, it's quite funny to say, well, all we need to do is start speaking faster, and they were, people won't understand us. <laughs> yeah, that's well, that's that's what they said that um, you know, uh, America, you know, United States and England are two countries who are separated by a common language. <laughs> you mm. know, because of the because of the, the way different things are said. One of the things I have found that helps with um, you know the different expressions that you use and the things that you say. I've done a lot of reading and even some of the older um, literature and stuff like that, that, that Mm -hmm. does say things in a more English way than, than an American way, you know, American uh, kind of really casualized everything. And I found out something interesting the other day. Um, Everybody in the world, except the United States and someplace like over towards Somalia or someplace like that over in Africa, Say Z instead of Z. Yeah, you're the yeah. So and we are the only ones saying Z. You know, and it was changed at a specific time, uh, like in the 1800s or something like that. Um, they changed the, to saying uh, Z in the United States, and of course, I'd heard Z all my life, and and I hadn't heard Z at all uh, until really regularly until. Uh, I started talking to you and then mm-hmm. I just, I watched this, this documentary on it. that was talking about it just a little bit. And they said that, uh, I mean, you know, it's been, it's only just been since the 1800s in the United States. It is at Z because Z is what it's been everywhere. And it's quite strange with all, with the way, with the internet spreading around, a lot of Americans do realize that. And on podcasts, they do say, uh, say, Oh, or Z for all you people outside. Mm-hmm. And this where's before nobody would have even acknowledged it would not know what you were talking about but now it's quite like the canadians they say z don't they that's how you that's I think so. how the untrained ear can tell a canadian from an american mm-hmm. if they don't know if they don't know any other one but it's the, they say z as well don't they so. oh yeah and that's one of the things i found out about podcasting is that they spend so much time, it seems, in politically correctly explaining things because, yes, mm. you do have an international audience when you have a podcast. You know, there's I know my show. Uh, I mean, there's it gets distributed around Europe and sometimes in Germany. There might be five people listen to this episode or something, you know, and, and so you could there's no way you're going to be able to account for everything. And so no. if, if they're listening to your show. Then they are probably going to be savvy or at least find entertaining the way you say things and the things you say. You and I are saying things differently. We both understand each other simply because we understand some nuances of the culture, each other's culture to where we, I know what you're saying when you come up with an expression that I would never say, you know, I understand that. And then, and you understand, you know, because you've heard a lot of, you know, things that have to do with America, a lot of television and stuff. And so you understand what I'm saying, even though we don't say things the same way. And if we don't, yeah. if we, if I don't understand what you mean, or you don't understand what I mean, it's entertaining to explain it and find out during the show, yeah. you know? And so and and, uh, that's what's one of the cool things about the setup that we have is that we do have some different things we say and some different cultural things, but we don't have to spend all of our time trying to cover 
every remote country that might have a different way of saying it. No, we just be who we are. We say what we're saying, you know, and if you and I don't understand what each other's saying, then we explain it. But, Mm. you know, we're just us and that's what we're doing. So we don't have to try to explain to the rest of the world, you know, because if they didn't, they could leave us an email and we'd be more than happy to explain what we were saying. (laughs) But it's, it's, the thing is, is that's what you, you want. You want the cultural differences or else would yes. you all be the same? It's a bit like I think there was uh, uh, somebody wanted to, to change something in Germany that changed the, the road signs for. Uh, and they said, well, put it. Oh, it was the, the tram stop. Oh. The tram stop. Somebody wanted to change that and call it, put the word tram on it. And they said, and I think they said, well, that's that's part of our culture. And he can't and I agree with that. I thought, well, why would you want to do that? It's, it's just, well, why would you put a, instead of having a bus stop in America, why would you put the Polish word for bus stop or something? It's a bit like that, isn't it? Saying that. But having said that, the, the, on the, the German sign, it's just the Straßenbahn Haltestelle, so it's a big, quite a big long word. That's what they did. Mm, okay, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Well, so the, the 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 big long words and the big long sentences that explain things have a tendency to be, you know, made a lot shorter by nicknames, and these things yeah. eventually end up in dictionaries. You know, what do they say? The uh, the underground. You know what mm. we would call a subway. In London, they call it the underground. And yeah, and that's why I grew up because it was always the underground, and that's mm-hmm. the uh, underground or the subway. But you understand yeah. either of it. But to me, if you say the underground without saying anything, you're talking about London. Okay, and and in the United States, if you say the <laughs> underground, then you're probably talking about some movement, uh, a political yeah, movement drug- that is, you know, is- yeah. <laughs> and say so if you say subway, the first thing I think about is New York. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, that like you say underground is London and subway. The first thing I think about is New York because I think other parts of the country do have subways, but not as big a network as New York. Is that correct? I, I that would say correct? yes. I'd say that's the biggest yeah. uh, subway system. Same thing yeah. with London. They're about the only one that does like we have a, a subway and under, but it's not a very big big one. It's just like a big circuit and that underneath the city. But uh, New York has a bigger one. The same with London have quite a big one but yeah that's where we celebrate the differences in in culture and i think uh, that's where it's good we get to see them and when i'm talking to people i i might say sometimes if i'm talking to you nikon mm-hmm. instead of nikon that we would say right. but i mean because then you would understand it and the, the same thing well, i'd say fz fz 1000 mm-hmm. instead of fz but as I said, I'm not giving up to the thing, but it's, hey, it just makes it easier in, in certain situations rather than somebody saying, mm-hmm. what was that? And and not understand, because everybody who says Z understands what people say when they said Z. Uh, yes. Uh, the, the first time I heard you say Z, I'd never really heard anyone say that before, but I got it. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, I understood it, it just... Because it's in context of, with what's going on. I could tell what, what you were doing whenever you, you said Z instead of Z. But, uh, you know, I, really, it's, it's, it's really not, not that hard to understand. The worst trouble I ever had understanding English was <laughs> my wife's uh, best friend was from Ireland. And oh, yes. she moved to the United States. Um, she was in her 40s. Or so when she moved, I believe, uh, maybe even closer to fifty. And it it was this my wife's best friend's grandmother, and mm-hmm. she not only okay, I, I do pretty well with accents. There's only so many in the world. My wife never understood a single word this woman said, <laughs> uh, not not one. And I can always tell because you know she would kind of move around behind my shoulder, and you know. <laughs> inadvertently not really but she couldn't understand and so but then this lady would see me and she would just come to me because we could carry on a car and i had to work hard at it because she not only had uh the a really thick accent compared to what i was used to i mean it was really thick i've never heard an irish accent this heavy but at the same time then she had 
different words that she mm -hmm. substituted for words that I might have used. So I had to interpret those. And then at the end of each sentence, she would say, yeah. 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 <laughs> like, oh, okay. like, okay, for instance, uh, they had seen me the first time, well, you know, the first couple of years they knew me. I, it was before I cut my hair off short and stuff. It's time for a haircut again. But anyway, <laughs> they were coming into town and, you know, they're from out of state and were coming to town. And they, and she couldn't wait to see what I look like with my hair cut off. And so she comes up to me and she says, got yourself a bulby. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. And so, <laughs> and so, you know, I had learned by this time that yeah, yeah was a period yeah, at the end of a sentence. Yeah. Bulby was the, I had to interpret that. That was the fact that I'd shaved my hair off. And so you know, a crew cut, or we used to call them beetle haircuts when we were <laughs> kids. And so a bulby, I interpreted as, yeah, you know, I got my hair all cut off and that's a, that's the way my hair would be. And then she, of course, put yeah, yeah at the end of it, which she always did. And so, um, and so, you know, I, I did it. I mean, I had to work really super hard because she was using completely different words in a lot of places that I had to interpret into context and do it. And, uh, but I mean, I, I just, just, just I love the lady to death. I mean, she's just a sweetie. And every time she'd see me, she would just hold her arms out and come and hug me because we could have a good conversation. And there were so many people that just couldn't understand a word she was saying. I mean, it's really sad, but you know, it's like a foreign language, you know? But like so you said, the, the speaking English, but it's like I was just saying before, it's all the words that you put together. They're all English words mm -hmm. and you might know the words, but if you've never heard them, your brain struggles to think what on earth is that? when you, and you miss the words you do know that you do understand because mm -hmm. you you're that worried about you're going to miss something so mm -hmm. i'll just get to the stage now when people are, i've given up getting to the age where you say i'm sorry can you say that again mm -hmm. or excuse me i don't intend to understand because i've gone past that younger in the younger years where you say oh yeah and you thought, what on earth? I've said yes to. So I don't know what I've said well, yes to. Or whatever. There's a there's a there's an expression that really really comes in handy whenever you don't quite get what somebody said, without saying yes or no or anything like that. You just go, hmm, hmm. <laughs> you're acknowledging that you heard what they said, but not necessarily agreeing or disagreeing with it. It's just kind of like, hmm. So that's what you think. I mean, you know, it's, it's just hmm. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, then you can't <laughs> commit your. You're not saying you, you're not right. laughing. They've told you something sad, or you're not agreeing to. Hmm. Well, yeah, like you know, so and so died. So 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 and so died. You know, or whatever. And then and, you know, like, oh <laughs> yeah, well, isn't, isn't that great? You know, that's what. <laughs> like, yeah, hmm. You know, you're what, you're what showing you concern. You're either yeah, showing concern, or yeah, or yeah. <laughs> oh, but you can get yourself into the only word that. I just disagree with you guys the way you say. We'll go right ahead. S O L D E R. Oh, okay. Solder. That's it. Solder. <laughs> For us, it's S O D D E R is what it sounds like the way we say it. A soldering <laughs> iron. Solder. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only one because I just think well, nobody drops the L. <laughs> well, how about how about how about how about salmon? Yeah, that's right. That that's fine. But on that, I mean, but so, I said, so so do you say salmon or? No, but as I said, but nobody said. As I said, we all say solder. That's the thing. Solder. But I can, uh, yeah. But even then, but it's strange how the language came. Why do you have like? Why don't you have it salmon? But it's it's a thing when you sort of study German and different languages like that. A lot of their words you do pronounce it like we have. You know, we, you have a knee in English, don't you? Mm -hmm. But they don't, they knee, they pronounce a K. <laughs> <laughs> a knuckle, knuckle, they pronounce <laughs> it. But that's where it so, came from. Why did we drop the word, what is, what is spelt, what, perfectly spelt okay? Well, why did we drop the word, you know, K from knuckle, knuckle? <laughs> what, I mean, why did we drop the sound on it? So. Uh, yeah, well, there, there's a lot of uh, silent letters in words that just make it much more confusing to spell, um, mm. you know, and then people are trying to read it and trying to say it, you know, and so, yeah, it's English. English is very, is a very convoluted language. I guess it's evolved so much from so many mm. different cultures. And then now it's evolving faster than ever because of the, uh, 
you know, the internet connections that you have all over the world. And so, and we've also adopted a bunch of foreign words, mm. you know, from French and Spanish and, you know, all, all these other languages and stuff. And they, uh, they just permeate the culture and there you are, you know. And, and it's strange that a lot of the, those foreign words, people don't think they're foreign anymore. They're no, they're not. Part, they're, they're English, but you say, hang on, no, they're not. There's somebody else, but with it, it, we've taken it on board and uh, done that. Remember, with this, one of the things I was learning in one of the translations, it says, you know, it says, uh, no, I speak, I don't speak English, I speak American English. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I thought, oh, we'll see the, well, the the melting pot in the United States. The melting pot means that there were so many people who spoke so many other languages, mm. uh, you know, have moved in. And so a local community would pick up on those particular languages. And as people moved out, they took this with them. And it's not just foods either. You know, you would expect foods, you know, to keep their same names or something. It's not just foods. I mean, it's it's just all kinds of different words, you know, that uh, come from other languages and, and are just considered part of standard American English now, you know. I would, you know what I would love? Some people say if you had one wish, <laughs> some people say, oh, I'd wish for lots of money. You know what one my wish would be? I wish I could just speak any language and understand any language. I thought, wouldn't that be fantastic just to be able to, speak and understand any language i was just saying to a friend the other day that when i was working at, at uh, another company years ago in the music industry type thing when we we're selling music and music uh, D tvs videos and all that the the company got bought out by the japanese and there was this young australian fellow you know it's only about 23 and he was the 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 translator for the the japanese managing director who couldn't speak a word of English. Hmm. And that was, and I thought he's an Australian fella. How do you get, and he sort of wasn't, wasn't raised in Japan. He just learned it, but it's such a hard language. And I used to envy him. So I thought that's so, such a great skill. Just, and it wasn't like just a little, he was a, at the top end, the managing director. So he had to get the words right or else he could get into some decent trouble if he got those wrong. But, and being able to read and write it like that, you have to be a bit of an artist to be able mm. to even write that because if you can't draw properly, you've said the wrong thing in that character or something that you've drawn. But uh, it just amazes me. And like, what's it like Arabic? I think is that, but it just look, it's such a fine line with little bumps. And that's just, it's just so skillful how people can write in that and that. How can the brain, uh, you know, I have enough trouble <laughs> getting English words sometimes mm -hmm. out there when they're quite big words, but how do they do that? But wouldn't, don't, wouldn't you agree that that would be such a great skill if you could just turn on any language that you wanted to at any time? I think that would, and you could make a fortune out of that if you could do that. You could have a good living doing that. You, you just have to if you could do that. Mm -hmm. No, that 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 is something that's very enviable. Uh, uh, there are a lot of people that can go with um, you know families of languages, such as various European languages. There's you know uh, similarities because they have a lot, a lot of the similar roots. But then when you go to something completely different, like mm. Chinese or Japanese or you know some language that's developed from a completely different way, it's even written in a different direction or you know, and again, it's it's pictographs or drawings as opposed to just letters being strung together. You're saying actual words by drawing a picture. You know, mm. the little and and if this stroke's just a little off, then you call them a dog instead of a you know an amazing human. You know, <laughs> I mean, it's you know, it's it's just because you did this little little edge I'll, off of it or something. You I'll, know, I've I've done that in in my German studies, and I'll <laughs> tell you off air. What I did, <laughs> so, but I won't tell you what I did Aww. on there. But it was one letter different, and it made such a difference to the the translation that I wrote on. And, and it was in the days; it was years ago when we, you know, not that long ago, but it was long enough ago where we had, you know, the overhead displays where you put the uh, clear screen and wrote on it and projected it on the wall before yes. things like a PowerPoint and these big monitors. And I put that on and the, the, the teacher says, yeah, if you've just the translated and this is what you've just said. And I thought, Oops. oh, but one, one letter made the big difference 
to that. So as I said, you've just really got to watch it. Whereas in English, a lot of the time, it, one letter doesn't make a great deal of difference. It's just spelt wrong. But there's not a lot of words where, you just, well, I must say, I I quite often do that when you touch typing. And I, my brain just keeps going in not and now. Hmm. Sometimes the key does it. And it's only you know one letter difference. It's N O W or N O T, one letter difference. Mm -hmm. You put that in an email, you totally, you know, you meant to say now and you said not. You can totally reverse the whole meaning of your email and you can get to (laughs) And it's, oh, and your your brain just keeps going and you just do that all the time. I think it's quite strange. Well, what I get upset with is whenever you're typing something and you know and you typed exactly what you meant to type and then it changes Mm -hmm. it on you. Oh, that's right. And you and 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 just as you hit send, oh, you know, you <gasps> you you realize that you just now started a you know a war in a third world country, you know, <laughs> because of what you just said. I do that as a bit of fun sometimes. If you're doing that, is let it just do all what it thinks to, and have a read through it, like all the the words that you think, and it can make. So, have you if if you want a bit of fun, what you should do is maybe watch this back on YouTube. And stick on the translation and read that. Mm-hmm. That will give you some really strange <laughs> things. Like I think Rick Rick does that with he does the voice dictation on the phone sometimes and sends a message. Mm-hmm. And I got one message one day. <laughs> it said, "Be careful, the police are at the server." <laughs> <laughs> it had nothing to do with that. He said, "Um, it was something like, are you going to be read?' But I don't know what I said. I don't know what on earth he meant to say. But he said, "Be <laughs> careful, the police are at the server." Mm. He that. I said, I, "I said sometimes I just laugh at the the translation these things come up with the the good sometimes." But you have a look on the YouTube and you, uh, yeah, the, the YouTube trans- stuff's hilarious. Really good when you look at the thing and says, "Oh, and it can come up with some disgusting stuff and be quite hilarious when you start watching, especially with the way I say things. Sometimes it <laughs> it mixes them up and it just gets them totally wrong. But you think it's trying, and at least somebody has no idea who can't hear, and there was no subtitles. At least they've got a sort of understanding, and I'm sure they'd be used to." It not being a hundred percent, but they'll get the gist of of what's going on there as well. Well, so. um, where we're at, uh, uh, at the post office where I work at, there's a lot of deaf people there, and mm-hmm. so people think that, for some reason, they think that sign language is a translation of English, but it's not. It is a language <laughs> of its own. It's not just translating well, English, and so. There's not even complete sentences a lot of times. It's just, it's just a, um, you know, just a concept that's being done, you know, and because, you know, you can say, you know, I trying to remember what I am is, uh, going home. Okay. Well, that's nice. But I, there's even dialects to where instead of just saying a whole sentence, I am going home or here locally, uh, the deaf people say they'll just do this. You know, I'm going, yeah. to, I'm going to the house, you know, I mean, that's, that's the way they would say it, you know, and I still use home, you know, I use home, you know, like a place to eat and sleep. Okay. Mm. And so you, I, I used to know a whole lot more signs than I do now, but, uh, but you just basically get the concept across and you don't do that. So whenever you see them on Facebook attempting to do English, Sometimes mm. it doesn't come across quite as well because they're speaking, they're trying to speak a foreign language, you know, mm. and it's, and it's, but it's, it's great, great stuff though. Uh, they are so patient whenever you're trying to, to do sign language, they are so incredibly patient. The biggest problem mm. I've always had is actually I can finger spell, but reading what they are spelling, because it, if they're using regular signs, that I can recognize a lot of the signs they use. But when they start to spell, I think of each letter as an individual sign and I forget mm. the other letters before they get to the end of the word. And yeah, I've, I've just right. never developed that speed to be able to read the finger spelling and buddy, they can just blaze away, you know? Well, it looks like we're nearly at the end of our show again. And I fixed up the, so it says next week, the 5th of the April, 5th not the 5th, of April. No, 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 not the 5th or the 5th. Fed, fifth. Yeah, I can't fin, even say. Fend, fend. 
I hope you say fart with an ID fired. <laughs> <laughs> and that's well, uh, show, show not number 40. We're getting up the line that's there. Next, yeah, that's next week. Yeah. And I was just going to say uh, uh, the time next week will shift because uh, – Let's put it back to this shot as well, our normal front one, mm-hmm. because my daylight saving finishes this weekend. Mm-hmm. So it would be 8 p.m. Mm-hmm. and 6 a.m. your time. That's yep. unless you want to leave it till 7 o'clock, and then we can still leave it that, but that's getting a bit late for you, isn't it? Yeah, if well, uh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the 7 would have been uh, a different. But for me, I switch back, and as my time switches, I go between 5 and 6, and it's a good thing yeah. I was at 6 this time because – I worked overtime at work tonight, and so I got home. It was after 5 o'clock when I got home from work. <laughs> and so the 6 o'clock was actually went working out quite, quite well today. And to me, we're okay, 8 o'clock for me, if I just rush home from seeing mum and just the, get in here and ready, but that works good because then I'm not so late, whereas now it's uh, nearly 10 o'clock. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but the next week will be a, a little bit earlier for me. But, mm-hmm. yeah, but. Looking forward to the daylight saving disappearing. The only reason is is because when it's dark at night, you don't feel as obliged to do a lot of things. You don't mind sitting in watching TV or or mm-hmm. doing something. When it's nice and sunny and light, you feel obliged to to be doing something creative or doing the gardening. But you can't when it's dark and, and well, cold and windy. That's what happens to me where I work night shift. You know, I mean, I'm awake on my night off, but here, you know, am I going to go downstairs and clean out the basement the way you would in the middle of the day? I should. Mm. Yeah, that's right. You know, but I'm sleeping all day, you know, because I'm I'm awake at night. And so you you do feel restricted. You know, you're not out mowing grass in the middle of the night. Mm. Even though <laughs> even even though a lot of mowers have lights on them, your neighbors generally <laughs> wouldn't appreciate you out there mowing grass at 3 in the morning. The neighbors here, you wouldn't last too long, and yeah. lucky they don't have guns here. Yeah, well, I was going to say here, here there are guns. So you know, all of a sudden he has, and all of a sudden he has, okay, it's over. It's it just goes opinion. off. Anyway, thank you very much for the show, and I shall catch you and everybody next week. So please subscribe and listen to our weekly catch up, mm-hmm. uh, and we put it's also on Vimeo as well as. Uh, on YouTube here, so and the the, the the audio podcast that comes out on Monday is at holbrooknewmedia dot com. Okay, and that, and then we sort of have another show scheduled for next week. There's nothing stopping us from next week unless something drastic happens, but I don't think there will be. Anyway, thanks for watching, and bye for now. See you next week. Bye. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. Links for a free subscription, feedback, and everything else we do is at holbrooknewmedia.com. You can find all things Jeff Blanchard at jeffblanchard.com.